And I would like to thank my first mate supporters, Andre Cruz. This is Don the Diecast Pirate, and today I have for you the April Diecast Mafia Invitational build of the Ford Talladega. So here's the car that I'm going to start with. Let's get it up on the turntable and take a look at it. This is the Ford Talladega. Uh, it was... Uh, NASCAR's entry into NASCAR's Ford's entry into the NASCAR racing, the car they made for the super speedways, hence the name Talladega. And I don't remember what year exactly it came out. Maybe it was 69. Uh, does this one say what year it is? It's the 69, so maybe 69 was the year. Um, which would have been the same year that uh, Chrysler and Dodge came out with their winged cars. Um, but in the mid 1980s, probably around 1983, I would say, a friend of my dad's rolled up in the driveway and he was driving a black Talladega. And that's what we're going to turn this car into. And I think that one had the dog dish hubcaps on it, but we have a little different wheel that we're going to go with on this. And. You know, we'll deal, detail out some things and whatnot, but for the most part, we're just going to try to recreate, recreate that car to the best of my abilities. So let me get this thing taken apart, and I'll get back to you. So we got the body, the glass. Um, no, they molded. I thought there was something wrong with the glass. They made some fake windshield wipers to mold it in. We might buff those off. I don't know. Um... The other way we'll polish that up. The interior in that car was black. And I remember some chrome. It looks like some flashing around the edges in there. We'll trim that out of it, paint that black, clean it up, paint that black. Uh, strip this body down. A Tamiya black, a Tamiya flat black. And the flat black is just going to be the hood. And I'll have to look some pictures up to see if the black extended all the way out to the nose piece, or the flat did, or if it was just the hood. There's that. Oh, also the wheels. I got these wheels off of eBay for it. They were made for lowriders, but the axles are actually the perfect length for this casting. So these are just going to be a direct swap out and replacement. And they did come with their green line out, and I, I swapped them around. So on this Talladega, I decided I wanted to drill out the exhaust tips. Now, I don't have a pin vise that would grip this small drill bit. So what I did is I put it in my Bosch cordless drill. It's a small one. And I turned the power all the way down to one. And I put the drill bit in pretty much as far as it can go. And I'm just going to... What's really great about this drill is... Okay, let's just get it going so the more you pull the trigger the faster it goes so it gives excellent control over what you're doing so I can just take this really slow and let the drill bit do the work. So just that quickly we go from fake exhaust to something that looks real. Also, 
super clean. Um, I've heard some people use purple power. This is what I've heard about, so this is what I use. Put that in, take the chrome off. And there you have it, 100%. You can't even see. There you have it, 100%. Chrome removal, just about looks like there's still some around that back hole, so I'm going to put that back in for a second. So I'm going to lay down some white scandal rest primer on it. Let's see here we have the Tamiya Black that I'm going to put down and then we're going to gloss coat it, which I could lay down the flat black first and gloss coat it either way. But I'm going to lay down the black, gloss coat it and then I'll let it sit about a day and then we're gonna come back and tape off and flat black the hood. Okay, so I got the primer laid down and I just I mix it up really well and it's straight into the gun. I've sprayed it with a 0.3 needle, about 22, 0.3 PSI, I'd say around 22. Uh, is closer to the mark. The Tamiya paints don't get anything mixed with them. They're straight into the gun, but you have to stir them slowly. You can't shake them. I don't know why. I've never tried it. Usually when they say to do something a certain way, I follow the directions because I'm sure there's a reason for it. Now this one, the Tamiya, again, 0.3 needle, and I'm, I set the gun down to about 16 and a half, 17 PSI, just like the uh, so the Spectra Flame. So, we get this Tamiya X1 Gloss Black in the bottle here. We'll get it sprayed on the car and see what we come up with. And this uses light coats. So just like the Spectra Flame paints, uh, when I put this on, it's just going to be very light. And then I'll come back in after, and this dries very quickly too, so I'll, I'll come in and I'll lay down just a light tack coat and then I'll come in and maybe go about the same or a little heavier and then I'll lay in uh, a heavy coat, you know. This is you need that tack coat. It's if you spray heavy right off the bat, your paint runs and you're going to have drips. I've, I've made mistakes with the Stano Rose before, and I've been able to wipe it off because I, I got in a hurry and sprayed it too heavy, and I had runs. I just was able to wipe them off and then just continue going right over top of it. So, just... But I guess, you know, the what I'm getting to is, the key thing is to take your time with this stuff, okay? You know, don't be in a hurry. Uh, just be relaxed. Don't be in a hurry. Take your time. Um, you know, it's only a three-inch car. I mean, it's not like you have to take all day to get a paint job on it, right? So, all right, let's get this on.
try to show you what's going on here. If I can get it in the camera. Right there, there's some imperfections in the paint. And I went ahead and clear coated it over it because I had an idea. And you can see where I took like a, and I forget what this is, it's the, the lightest sandy pad that I have. I just kind of went over it lightly last night, but the paint was still tacky. It's been over 24 hours since I put the clear coat on this, and I put the clear coat on very thick and heavy. What I'd like to do, if I can, and I have the contours of the, the car to work with as well. Let's just take that off slightly. Now, what I'm going to do, I gently, very gently, hit those high spots with the tip of the knife blade. And I'm going to take this to the sink and I'm just going to wet sand it. And we'll see how that comes out. Alright, so this is the results of the wet sanding, and I used my mini hairdryer to dry it out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with this. Um, there's some things that scare me about it, but I have a plan, and I think it's going to come out okay. So, the next step is to get it all taped off, so we can flat black the hood in the cowl panel. So let's get ready for that. So I've pushed through to the point of assembly and so I just wanted to take a step a moment here and show you what all, all I've done. Uh, so I was really over the last week I had not been feeling well and I was not getting things done after work like I should. Uh, and that's just part of doing this, you know. Uh, I was getting through work every day, coming home, and uh, knowing looking at all the bills that are coming up over the next month or two and I was just beat you know I'd go to bed early you know 11 12 o'clock and get up and go to work the next day and I thought that going to bed earlier all week I'd be able to do more on Sunday well I did get some things done Sunday um, but still you know, I got this car in paint and clear coat on Sunday, and it's Monday night now, and I had to tape it off and flat back black the hood, and I ran into some issues with paint where there was a spot on the fender that was sticking up, and I may have recorded that, I don't remember. Um, and then I showed taking it off with the tip of the knife blade and I was going to try to wet sand it well the problem is is that the clear coat wasn't fully cured and trying to wet sand it 
and then I thought, well, I'll try to polish it, and then I put car wax on it, and it looked horrible. And so what I've done... What I've done to save this paint job and not have to strip this thing down and repaint it because I still had that post-apocalyptic build to finish by Friday night so I can get that video uploaded for Saturday and I was working on that last week one or two days and things that I glued together are falling apart now and I am just uh <laughs> so basically I, finished, I just finished detailing this car and the car for tomorrow night at the same time and but what I did to save this paint job is I covered all the gloss parts with this industrial petroleum jelly and that just makes this car a dust magnet things are sticking it like you to it like you would not believe um, but I just wanted to show you what I did I'm not going to detail the windshield wipers on this car. I really, really don't want them sticking out. Um, but I coated the windows in the quick shine, floor shine. Um, and I was trying to remember where I bought. I got this car. I thought that I'd bought it to uh, build this car, and I believe this is another one that my son gave me, and which is going to be really awesome at the end. Um, so what I did to the interior was I did spray it a gloss black this time when I sprayed the, the car, I sprayed the interior. Um, and then I went and took the silver Sharpie, metallic silver Sharpie, and touched each one of the, the buckles for the seat belts. And then I came back and I put the, the silver Sharpie in for the steering wheel. And then I also went over this with a gnome oil, but you probably can't tell. I don't think it made that much of a difference. It would really have a better effect if this was done in a flat black or a black primer. And then have the gnome oil put on it. It would really stand out more, I think. Um, but I wanted to experiment, you know. And you don't learn if you don't try new things. So I'm not unhappy with it. I would rather have it the other way. But honestly, you know, once you put this car together, you're really not going to pick it up. And I'm not going to pick it up and look at the interior and say, oh, what did I do? You know, uh, so I got the wheels. I don't know if I showed them earlier. I got the wheels. I bought these on eBay. Um. The back is all detailed uh, tail lights coloring the bottom with the silver sharpie. And they got the base all detailed out and the front. And I'm not going to put any kind of clear coat or anything like the, the micro crystal clear on the headlights. I'm just going to leave them chrome on this one I think it doesn't take away from the car because you got the turn signals that are going to draw your eye anyway um, I was looking at pictures online and uh, looking at how what part of the hood was flat blacked um, and it was it wasn't the front nose piece but it was the hood itself and the cowl panel and what that does is it reduces glare. You'll see that a lot on a lot of race cars from the era where they would put a flat paint, a flat black paint on the hood to reduce glare for racing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing reassembled and then we'll come back for the reveal. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present to you my 1969 Ford Torino Talladega. A recreation 
of the car that my dad's best friend pulled up in the driveway one day when I was a kid. This is my build for this month's Diecast Mafia. The Diecast Mafia are Matchbox Mark, Ron as some mode diecast. Cole, Akuna's diecast customs. 2HD cat and Opa. I am proud to say each one of these guys is my friend. I just noticed something and I would not be able to live with myself if I did not correct it right this moment. The car now has door handles. Let's get it up on the turntable and take a look at it. I think this black car is really trying to try my patience. Every time I touch it, it just keeps the fingerprints and go to wipe them off and I will be so happy once this car is put up in the case and I never have to touch it again. <gasps> oh. Man, this came out good. But the least little thing because of the, what I had to do to save the paint, it's not really touchable. That's the only drawback. That's the only drawback. And I'm going to put it out there right now is, you know, I did some things with this paint job so I wouldn't have to strip it and repaint it to, uh, save some time this week. And honestly, what I have coming up, I should not have taken on as many builds as I have, but I've committed to them and I will complete them. It's okay that I push my limits to find out what they are. Because I want to do more complicated builds and I don't want to just sit back and do the easy ones. This is the first time I taped and painted a different color. The first time in, other than getting some of the petroleum jelly on the hood and trying to cover it up with the flat black paint, and I touched it with and I had some, some problems with the door handle on this side with the Molotov ink getting on the door and I had to come in with a tiny Q-tip in, in the gloss black and just cover it up a little bit and then go back in and touch up the door handle and then I did it again and I had to do it again and if I touch the sides of the cars at least my fingerprint and if I touch the roof of the car at least my fingerprint and for all of that, for all that struggle to get this car to be what it is it's worth it my name is Don my dad's name is Don no I'm not a junior he gave me a different middle name my dad's fr best friend his name was Don if you watch my first red line restoration That video is dedicated to the memory of my friend Kenny. Kenny was Don's son. The Camaro is a little bit big compared to the Talladega. In reality the Talladega is a much bigger car than the Camaro. These two cars were in the same driveway once upon a time. I want to thank the Diecast Mafia for everything. I've said it time and time again. Apparently, this thing has a timer. But I'm going to get this wrapped up here. I've said it time and time again. Thank you guys for having this invitational and welcoming me into the community and making me one of your own making me your friend um, alright guys um, 
Sundays now are off the hook and new arrivals alternating until all the off the hook videos are done uh, every other week. Wednesdays are what's in the case, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Fridays are live premiere, 8 p.m. of my weekly build. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, check out my subscriber's choice and vote for the car that I'm going to build in May. Uh, we have the car coming up this month that I'm going to build, and that'll be out on subscriber's choice cars done on the 30th. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Click that like button for me. I really appreciate seeing all your likes in the comments, your wonderful, wonderful comments, and the conversations that we've had in them in my videos and on some of your videos and everything and uh, ring the bell for notifications you know if you're a youtuber uh, tell me in the comments below I will come check out your channel uh, you know in also I'm on Instagram where I will post uh, beauty shots of my completed builds after they're done so I also have a Patreon uh, for those who wish to support the channel. Uh, the first tier is five dollars a month. Second tier is seven fifty a month. First tier and second tier get you uh, pictures and um, you know works in progress and sneak peeks of the completed builds before the videos come out. Um, and also the second tier will get you a shout out on the video, which you've seen at the beginning. Uh, so with that being said. As always, this is Down the Diecast Pirate, and I will see you next time.